Soybeans, because over over half the world soybeans from, from about 2007 was genetically modified, is a higher percentage than any other crop. Each year, the, an EU member states imports approximately 40 million tons of soy material. Why GMOs are controversial? Controversial? They lack, la they, they lack labels that tell you if they're genetically modified. That also debates whether if it's more expensive or less. Um, we dislike the GMOs because when you genetically modify it to improve something, you can also create uh, new toxins or allergens that can cause bad reactions because the your immune systems are not uh, used to it, so it can make you sick. Like um, with uh, environments, how the environment people, they said that they took some sort of nut and added it to the soybeans, which they fed to the cattle, which ended up affecting people with nut allergies. So... Um, you'll get to it. Dang. And the last group. <clears throat> Okay, we are the concerned, like, public citizens, and my name is Gracie. My name is Paige. Jamin. Okay, what is a GMO? A GMO is a living organism whose genetic material has been artificially manipulated. And GMOs are made of three main components uh, to make a gen genetically modified organism, the gene you want to transfer, the organism you want to put it into, and a vector to carry the gene into the target species cells. The gene that is to be transferred must be cut out and isolated from the original organism. The active restric restriction enzymes are needed for this process, and what those are are enzymes that cut strands of DNA at a specific point. And why are GMOs so controversial? Well, to public citizens, it usually we like see it as like foods and whatnot, so we're usually wondering about it. And several food companies have recently reformed their menus because of this. And McDonald's has stopped using chicken treated with human antibiotics. Chipotle is going GMO-free. Panera is eliminating a long list of ingredients. Pepsi is abandoning the use of aspartame, and Kraft is remo removing all the colors from its mac and cheese. And some of the reasons that GMOs are good, well, they are rigor rigorously <laughs> tested for safety and allergen potential before they even reach markets to be sold. And this testing process can take seven to ten years and must include evaluations and uh, are of potential risks to use and or to us and livestock as well as potential risks to wildlife. And a couple examples of GMOs are golden rice, long-lasting tomatoes, strawberries, pineapples, sweet pepper, and insecticide sweet corn. citizens, how do you feel about GMOs? How does it affect you? That's great information, but why do you care as citizens? For like our food benefits and such, because we don't want anything that's potential to our lives or at risk of like any diseases or anything that'll be spread. So are you telling me, citizens, that GMOs cause bad things to happen to the human body? No. No. But would you want to know if they did? Yes. Yeah. Like, do you, are you, um, and this could be a personal question, too, are you guys people that read the nutrition facts on something before you eat it? No, or drink not it. all the time. <laughs> is she talking to you, or is she talking to the concerned public citizen? Well, she said personal question, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you had to speak for the people of South Dakota, what would you say? If you were responsible for representing all your family and friends and people that you don't even know in the state, how would you be concerned about GMOs?
We're not concerned. This isn't like a structured question with a single right answer. I'm, I'm just <coughs> probing. And remember, you are a group. There's nothing wrong with you guys discussing this a little bit before you answer. cheaper because it costs less to grow them because you're making less passes through the fields to spray them and it can take less time because if you, every time it, you go and if you're going no-till where you don't have GMOs because you can't spray with anything because you'll kill the plant you're taking out crop because no good till uh, tillage, field cultivator, you can go straight down the field without taking out some plants because you're always going to be off every once in a while and you take out some of the plants as you're going then. And it can be five plants or it can be a whole pass down the field. We do not know for sure. This is just what Daniel said. Well, that's okay though, that's something to think about. I appreciate you kind of um, even just providing that perspective because that's a valuable um, point in the bucket, right, for all of you to think about in that space. There's a good book. I would just recommend it for you to kind of look up and see what it says in the backstory. It's called United States of Corn. Um, think about how many products in the U.S. are built with corn, right? And if things are cheaper, are we willing to buy it and not really question the nutrition or the background factors? And I'm asking, I don't know. I, I, I want to hear from you all because I want to know if I should buy organic or not, guys. I'm Taylor, concerned. you were going to say something. Know. Were you going to say something? Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought Taylor was. <laughs> well, in theory, you, more, uh, more al like allergies could be affected from the tampering of the, uh, the organic uh, crops and stuff because you are adding in foreign elements from different other various organisms into the, uh, the, the organisms that you are genetically modifying. So technically, or not technically, but you could get different allergies that are more severe or less severe. So it's it's a, um, what would you call it, a, a mixed bag of health. A mixed bag. This is a grab bag. Yeah, Absolutely. I, I like how you stated that. It's definitely a mixed bag. Who's my Mountain Dew drinker in this class? One of you guys heard about how you love, oh, a lot of people. <laughs> okay, so if I love Mountain Dew too. You go to the store. And there's a new Mountain Dew out that's like 50 cents for a can, or 25 cents, let's say. And then there's the regular Mountain Dew, it's like a dollar. Which one are you going to buy? 25 cents, right? But what if it says, oh, made with GMOs, and they don't tell you what type of GMOs, but you know that it's genetically modified somehow. There's something in there in the salts or the corn syrup that causes it. And you're someone who gets allergies a lot. How would you feel about that? Would you want to know more information? Would you say, whatever, it's 25 cents and just try it and see what happens? Well, a lot of different companies out there now, I've noticed, have been putting their, what kind of GMOs they use in their products on their website. So right now with all the technology, you could just search. If Absolutely, gonna, you could do some research. If I'm Should it be required store, to be put though. right on the can so you don't have to stand there in the store with your phone out? Well, a lot of us teens already do have our phones out. Yeah, but you know this oh, touche. Yes. <laughs> Farmers, you seem to have the most to gain and the most to lose. Should we allow GMOs or are you against the GMOs? We should allow GMOs because in drought years, we can produce more corn. And like environmentalists, it saves gas. So we don't have to put as much like exhaust 
into the air, <coughs> and it doesn't have to hurt hurt Earth. And why would we put out products or food that are harmful when our own families are going to be eating that food too? And our livestock, well, we do both. In the long run, the GMO crops, you will get more yield versus your all natural due to the fact that those crops have been either crossbred with the same kind of food or genetically modified in labs in order to get the best yield for the best planting. Around here, they just went, we've gone through a drought where everything is dried up that used to be full of water. So then we use different crops that don't need as much water in order to get better yield. So what you're trying to say here is, is you're taking something simple, like I want to go get a can of corn. It's a simple can of corn, because I like corn. <laughs> but I can't tell unless the can says, which if it doesn't say, then we got a trust issue with the company that says genetically modified corn, or if it's just corn, where it grew the seed, put it in the ground, grew, went through the circle of life, and now it's in a can. Well, how do you know that that seed that you bought from the grocery store isn't genetically modified? They don't always put that on there, too. So it's a big controversy in order to know whether or not it's genetically modified. And if you have a definition of genetically modified being the crossbreeding of plants, because you're not doing taking your plant, taking it to a lab and doing that physically or doing it by crossbreeding or cross-pollinating plants. Schneider. Alex, the are you staying inside your role as an environmentalist? The guy below Mrs. Keller had a question. Oh, Jim has a question? Go ahead. It's a GMO for a moment. Yeah. And let's think of, can you hear me by the way? Just barely. Let, let's talk about the costs, the true costs of food in terms of energy and gas. The farmers and the environmentalists are kind of hitting on there are a lot of things that go into GMO that we don't think about. <laughs> Gail kind of mentioned it. But I want to talk about it specifically. The real cost of food. And that there's a lot of things that farmers take for granted. And the FDA takes for granted. Farmers take soil for granted. They take water for granted. You mentioned drought, but you don't mention when you use water, where is that water coming from? And if you're using more water, because you're growing more crops, GMO. Yeah, the crops are growing more, but are you are you um, adding to the drought crisis? We're seeing this in California right now, where GMO crops are being grown extensively, and they have a serious water problem because of it. Because they're they're growing six times what that valley can support in its ecology, and now it's like where's all the water? But we became so efficient, we didn't think about those natural resources in a systematic way. And the FDA, they're not thinking about how the government subsidizes. You didn't mention that at all. I'm very cross about that. <laughs> how the government subsidizes fuel, corn, how they subsidize the plastics market. We're not talking about what exports look like and what exports means for the farmer. The farmer isn't just producing food. He's impacting an ecosystem both culturally, socially, and economically. Um, and I wonder if the farmers really think about all of those hidden costs when they talk about efficiency in GMOs. Farmers, do you have a response? <laughs> Trevor, you mentioned fewer passes down the field. I, I think Danny, Danny. Danny. Danny mentioned that one. Daniel did? Even though we're immunologists. Yeah. Okay. So... Does fewer passes down the field have anything to do with what Mr. Bruner just said? Not really. Not really, because he just told us that, like, California has, plant has six times more in the, valley of the, in the valley than it can handle. Right. So that would be more passes down the field. <coughs> well, I guess, depending on if it's a lot, depending on how they plant it and combine it. How do... How does genetically modifying a plant affect the number of passes you make down the field? It can reduce it due to the fact that you don't need to spray pesticides or anything else. So 
you don't have to go down the field with all your equipment repeatedly. You only have to go down to plant it, wa water, spray, irrigate, yeah. whatever, spray, and then harvest it. So then you don't have all those other steps in between. But does irrigating, that's not a pass to the field. Right. That's and an additional cost. So you're saying that they can build pesticides right into the plant. Or immunization. Where the plant, say like a certain insect, whenever it starts eating on that plant, it, it, uh, that causes the plant to kick in like, like a pitcher plant. They break down insects. Like, or so if, say a corn, they have a specific gene that tells it to excrete a certain something or another or do something in order to protect themselves from those insects or bacteria or diseases. Now, will this affect humans? Because if it affects bugs, it should affect humans as well, you know? Because you, you have that toxin or whatever it is. Because we don't know. We're just immunologists. Theoretically, uh, what uh, they do it is make it so it only affects target species. But when some of them, they don't realize that we're all so genetically alike that it can affect us. That's why where the nut allergy is coming. They didn't think about that in the long run. And then, say, butterflies, right? They're big pollinators. And bees and all those other insects that pollinate. Well, that, they still eat on the plant, not as much, but it still can affect them. So, it's, that's why it's such a big controversy. It has its cause and effect, its benefits, and its downfall. So it's pretty much a gamble between pay a little bit extra and actually know what you're eating or pay a little bit less and have that chance of that there's some sort of toxin in it. So you're pretty much paying 50 cents less to have that chance that your corn has poison in it. Not necessarily because it's not necessarily poison, it's more so of a, a barrier. But if the plant puts out a barrier that can kill or get rid of the bugs, sprays that people use to kill insects or bugs is very harmful and it can make it can kill a human very easily through smell, the fumes of the spray. So is this like well, Bart said, is then it you come to spray back to with your all natural food, you have to spray it in order to keep the insects and bacteria and all that off, right? According to Steve Lau, the spray that we used to use <laughs> before GMOs came along, like, you couldn't get it on you, you couldn't breathe it or anything, but because that way we didn't have to spray as many times, but with GMOs came along, we didn't have to use that spray, and then we didn't have to worry about getting the spray inside us, or on us, or... Some of those sprays aren't, they're horrible for you, and you can't necessarily get 100% of it off of that crop, but GMOs, if you think about it, the GMOs are a part of the genetic makeup of the food. That genetic makeup, it's they're changing the smallest, tiniest bit in order to get the part that they want to work. It, uh, the ones that they do in labs, that one is the big one where you don't know what you're doing. Cross-pollination breeding, which can depending on who you are, can be testing for a GMO. Because you're swapping genetic information, still. can still affect you. It's now, what if you have a, a GMO field on one side of the road, and then you have one which is owned by a completely different person, and is completely organic and stuff like that. Couldn't they cross-pollinate and tamper with this one? So... Why, like, because, like, if that, if this one was mixed with peanuts, and it's going to specifically say that it was mixed with peanuts, uh, on the can, can or whatever, if it mixes with this one, it will also have that effect, wouldn't it? Or That can't happen, that's that, um... Uh, target, the target species, not, tar you don't want to target that, that's all... Uh, repercussions. That happens, and that's why it's also a big controversy. You don't want those 
things to mix because some people are completely against it, so they'll buy a specific brand. They know, but really do they know because that cross-pollination may happen. Okay. So it's up to the farmers to have the absolutely <laughs> right thing and have it set up perfectly so there's no chance that anything could happen to it. Well, or it, if they don't, if they just don't care, if they are just going for the paycheck. And well, also... Sorry, can keep going. Well, that, going to that, well, if you think about it, those farmers do try their best, but nothing is 100% perfect. You won't get, you can't go say, oh, I'm going to get X amount of crop every year and get a, that exact amount. And you can't say, oh, this is going to be, I'm going to have 42 rows and etc. You can't have perfect crop. You can't have perfect yield. You can't do all of that. So the GMOs, we're trying to make a perfect crop as perfect as we can. But then you get into it, that being with the peanuts and all of that, well, is it bad? Is it good? Is it not? Is it the perfect crop that we're looking for or not? Yeah, and like, how is the FDA managing to, like, label these if, like, they can cross-pollinate and stuff? Exactly. Like, how do you regulate this? How do you regulate it, FDA? FDA, are you willing to accept that challenge? You have to do this, FDA. Um, how many deaths have came from GMOs? Yeah. The long-term effects of GMOs have been... One person has died from GMOs. First human death officially caused. May 13th, 2015. So if they've been around for roughly... Since the mid fifties, I thought was what we read. So there's it depends on what you consider a GMO because they could have been since the fourteenth century crossbreeding or our lab ones, which was almost seventy five years of GMOs. I think we're all agreeing that the GMOs that we're qualifying as GMOs are when you go to a lab and specifically uh, change like the genetic makeup. That's one in seven billion. So, so over 75 years, only one official cause of death has come from GMOs. But that's so the one that we can exactly lean from GMOs. Imagine, you can think about it, there may have been cases out there where it may have actually been GMOs, but it looked like something else. Yeah, and how many people might have died from a, uh, uh, a <laughs> like a... Toxin created. Yeah, a, a created, uh, like, an accidentally created allergy... That's been created, peanuts. and they have ex like horrible allergies to peanuts. How many do you think would have died from that? Yeah, that could happen. You have to consider. What of? But did they? Um, well, we will never know. And I fuck. commend you on thinking on the extreme, but I would also think about long-term health effects of genetically modified food, right? So, what about um, obesity and the fact that our bodies can't actually process corn products, right? I mean, I. I'm going to kind of push you to think in that. So I have a question, of, to, uh, again, to all groups. Did anyone do research on um, what types of modifications are happening in the genes? Well, what is it that they're trying to do? They're either taking out, blocking, or exchanging certain traits in order to get, say, you have a corn that gives you giant ears so you can plant less but get more corn. And some corns, they grow for a certain amount of time and then wither, so you get, then you get your cattle or pig and all your animal feed from that, and then you get the crops that last longer in order to feed the people. And then some crops, they don't necessarily wither as fast, or wither faster. For, they change the makeup in order to make the crop that they want. So you can get so bigger... Is there any research that anyone found about what about animals that are consuming genetically modified organisms? Mm. And how does that impact human population? We eat animals. Well, we feed all of the cows, the pigs, chickens, most of our food. Turkeys. Turkeys, all the foods that we eat. Some of a uh, good majority of them are 
no one really knows the exact amount, but we feed a lot of them, the GMOs, because we can grow a lot of crops in order to feed a lot of animals, so we can have more animals, more crops, mm -hmm. That's the healthier point. animals. Right, um, that's the point she's making, though. The question she's asking is, what are the long-term effects of that? And do we know yet, right? Uh, what well, is a long-term research study that's been conducted to know what the effect is on human populations? Well, a lot of them are very biased that I've read and I bet all of us have read that say they do affect these and this is the cause, but they have no concrete proof. It's more beliefs. And some say they don't affect us at all and that's just their beliefs. There's no real concrete facts behind it. And we're that's the big controversy. No one has... 100% true facts. It's a lot of biasness. Was anybody able to find studies on whether we're eating animals that have ingested GMOs or whether we're ingesting the GMOs directly ourselves? A few of the studies that we read about, they use biased results. They were looking for those results. They weren't looking for the benefits. They were looking for which the is, bad. Which is good, Alex, but the ELA portion of me wants you to cite those studies. I thought it was Emma right now. <laughs> I want to I want to know the studies you're referring to. And Mr. Bruner has has questioned the law of unintended consequences. There there actually isn't any. This is why there's so much faults in it is because there isn't enough. There wasn't enough time to do a long-term study on everything because there was, and also there was a lot of factors that needed to go in, like other eating habits that the person may have had, and a lot of people say they haven't been around for a long time for them to be, uh, like, I'm talking about the ones that you take into a lab and you take the gene from another plant and send them to another. They haven't been around for a long enough time for there to be any um, results. And... Uh, According to the ICSU, regulations in different countries differ because on the requirements of GMOs and other environmental impact assessments, and they differ because this country may consider something a GMO and this country may not. So, and they also constitute what what means the what means that it's being harmed, like. Being harmed could be Riley sneezing a lot, or it could be him, like, on his deathbed, like, dying. And what is the ICSU? I, it says it here. Hold on. And do we care the difference between Riley sneezing a lot and Riley being on his deathbed? Not really. Yes. Because it kind of goes back to Trevor's statement that he adamantly continued to say only one person has died. At what point are you willing to say one person is enough? Does it have to be a million before we do or don't do anything? Well, it depends on how that person died. If it's a direct, like, say that GMO was a poison. Right. But then yeah. you can say, well, like with the peanut allergies, how many people have died from allergies, and that's what their causes of death has been labeled, but it's been caused by GMOs. So we really don't know the true amount of death. And we don't, people, but how many do, do have to die before we, we say that's too many? Well, how many people have died from the flu and all well, that, so... But you're answering a question with a question. We're not monks. So and Isabel said that um, there wasn't enough time to get long-term studies before these GMOs entered our food supply. But I happen to know it takes at least a decade to get a drug into our drug supply. Who is in charge of that? So I'm going to go back to our FDA. tax dollars that are That's the FDA. FDA. So is the Come FDA... On, and Let's go. Are they the ones that, that decide if we can have GMOs in our food supply or not? Are they the ones that are going to say you can do this, but you can't do that? Well, food is in their name. You would kind of think. <laughs> right? So, like... How I understand it is you have this product, say you have a car, this brand new Chevy Suburban came out, and they only did some tests on it, some safety tests, no long-term safety tests. So after 100,000 miles, 
The thing could fall apart and no one would know until you drive the car and it falls apart. That's how I understand the they did some tests on the long term. But oh, if you if you eat it tonight, you'll be fine the next morning. How Nothing but, happens. But how do they know that what to test for? Because GMOs being so new, they don't know what to look for in a GMO to know if it's good or bad. But they know they need to look for poisons in the food. They need. Well, how do they recognize those poisons? Maybe it's a new kind of poison that. Oh, look! It looks like. But that's why this. they're testing this on testing subjects. Um, they need to be able to know. It affect a certain subject. Yeah. Just let us be mad. <laughs> <laughs> they, need, they need to know whether it's going to affect. To test multiple subjects, and then if it's okay there, then you bring it into humans Our and, test, and test it on test humans. But, but say it affects a rat, right? <laughs> okay, so we use rats because they are very similar to humans, right? They're not exactly the same as humans. So you test on a rat, it kills the rat, but then say. They did. W we're willing to test it on a human subject, but it didn't affect a human, so it may only affect rats. But it's, it'll probably if it killed the rat, it'll probably affect the human in the long run, for some, some reason, yeah. later precaution. So, concerned citizen, I would throw the question out to you: How much is too much, and when do we stop it? How many deaths have to occur, if any? When do we allow the humans to ingest something that hasn't been fully tested? What's wrong with just walking into the grocery store and buying a fresh grown tomato that's just been a fresh grown tomato? So what's the question? What's your viewpoint? Question? I want you guys to chime in on here because you are the people. What's your thoughts? Well, I mean, the supposed like death that people are saying, if it is, I don't, because I mean, it could not be a GMO. It could just be something with the guy's health that he had a problem with or anything. But they are saying that it's because of a tomato or something that he ate. And uh, GMOs, they do make long-lasting tomatoes now, which could that could be possibly the issue. But if it's not an issue of GMOs, it's just a human death that doctors are assuming and haven't had enough research on. Then. It's really not affecting yet, but since it's a concerning topic at the moment, I think that it should be something more looked into and more research. Research should be dawned upon and there if they're tests. harmful and more tests before anything and more information on other foods instead of just like vaguely putting it out there and not saying what's in it. Are you willing to pay for that? Pay for no GMOs or no pay for, for the testing. 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 Yeah, because it's all government testing, and you pay for the government testing. Testing because yeah, you're a citizen. <laughs> well, but then you're paying for that, which then can lead to other things. Say, so that testing takes years and years and years and years, right? Well, what are we supposed to do in the meantime, the downtime? You have to feed people something, right? Are you going to feed them the GMO crop or the all-natural crop? Well, not everything is genetically modified, so it's not like we're going to starve. But not every... <laughs> yeah, but some people but, uh, would starve because a large portion of our crops... A like, large portion of our crops? Yeah, they're all... Okay, say we stopped planting GMOs whatsoever, right? Then we would have... If you look statistically, that yields from all natural crops are actually less than the GMO crops because we've done all the changing to the GM the GMO crops in order to make sure we get better yields. So that would take away in the US gets crops from across the world. We send crops across the world. So we would be constricting that amount of food so not everyone could get it. Right? But then if you get rid of all natural foods then some people don't eat all GMOs whatsoever. They make sure that it's not GMO all the time, and then they don't need it. So they would, if we just made GMOs, they wouldn't. So it's... As long as I can remember, my family's growing GMO crops. We fed them to our cows, and we make our own meat. Like He turned out funny. We butcher it up. I've been eating that meat for 10 years, and so has my family. None of us have died yet. <laughs> I have a question for the farmers. Okay. So, you guys said earlier, we're using less harmful sprays that are less... It's not, it's not going to kill you very easily. Okay, But, since GMOs, 
I know. Everybody, now there's coming up, uh, other weeds are becoming resistant where you're using more sprays again. And there's one spray out right now that it's, if you breathe it, the nearest hospital is not close enough where they can, if you breathe in the dust from mixing it in your tank, it will kill you before you get to the hospital. Or if you, the hospital won't be able to. But that's the point of GMO, to, so you don't have to use it. But the problem is the GMOs, okay, you got, say, Roundup Raycorn. Okay, people have been using Roundup for the last, oh, ever since they've created it. And they've used it to the point of it, such an extent where the far, where the, it's not working anymore on some weeds, such as an example of kochia. You cannot kill kochia, and it's become Roundup resistant, where you're, now they're using it to a spray to kill kochia that now another GMO, and now this other GMO product, I forget what the name of the spray is that it's resistant to, but it's all, in other states, this product is already the one that will kill you before you get or make you about the nearest hospital isn't good so, close enough. What's it'll, kosher? Yeah. As kosher. an entomologist, why are you worried about this? Because aren't entomologists bugs? Yeah. Immunologists. Uh, immunologists. Yes, but he's an immunologist. And first, no one else is asking these questions or asking it up. Except for That's Alex and you. GMOs. But so this, you're going back to the worst sprays that are going to kill you, and you farmers are responsible for overuse of the GMOs. So are you guys, is the, are you guys being regulated on how much you are using the GMO, the spray on the GMO? Daniel, well, what is kosher? Kosher is a fire weed. It's fire weed. We have computers in front of us. We're not idiots. Immunologists, if I didn't know better, I would say that you are using scare tactics. <laughs> well, in order right. to get your point across. No, you kind of. Well, if there's that <laughs> chance that it's going to happen, are you going to take that chance? But how many of you have ingested GMOs in the last week? Well, that's the thing, you don't know. Probably. So, the question was asked on the, on the internet from Ohio Do you realize that everything you're talking about? Is affecting you right now as you breathe. GMOs have done something to your body. Period. They have. It's a fact. Have they done exactly what Native American corn did in hundreds of years ago? Or have they done something different? That's the question that people are asking, that's the, the concerned public and the environmentalists and the farmers have a stake in that very question right there. I'm going to ask you a humanity question here. How many of the special interest groups as you look around the table are concerned not necessarily with the GMOs but the money tied to? Whether it's in the stopping, whether it's in the regulating, whether it's in the we have to pay for research, whether it's in the can we get the grants for the environmentalists, whether it's the farmers. How many of your motivating factors for or against GMOs are economically driven? A lot of them. Mm -hmm. the, the vast majority mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Look, look around the list. Because you got, you got your immunologists. Immunologists. Close who want to make sure that everything that they're doing pays them in order to make sure that everyone's healthy so they they want to get paid to make sure to get everything done. Yeah, they, they're driven to get paid and if they're getting paid then they'll do their work but if they're not getting paid they're not going to do their work which means we're not going to be immune. But that's the same thing for everybody. If then by, you guys, if you're not getting paid, you're not going to do anything either. Well, yeah, but okay, so you, then you go to concerned citizen. Their tax dollars are paying for all these tests, right? They're paying the farmers, they're paying the government, they're paying the FDA, they're paying everyone. We should stop paying the government today, by the way. <laughs> That's yes. a great idea. Yeah. Every, the, these guys pay everyone. So, are you like. I don't you, care. But and then the farmers, <laughs> right? They want to get money, but they also want to feed everyone, right? They have to feed their families, they have to pay for things, they have to pay for all their equipment, all their. All the seeds, all the everything, right? Sprays, whatever you want. Et cetera. 
fuel, and then you go to the environmentalist. They're trying to get paid in order to save the environment. Well, what they think is saving the environment, at least. <laughs> and then you get the FDA, who check everything, but yeah, then they can't check everything at the same time. But your tax as immunologists, we're... In order to get paid, we need to keep people from dying so they can pay us in the long run. Well, basically, we're, so. we, we want it where people don't have allergic reactions that are super severe. And, die. and uh. that's why the GMOs are an issue, because they can, like, generate new allergies. Which could, or, yeah, okay, therefore so kill the people, so really then the people would feel like the GMOs themselves, because a lot of the crops, just like, right, so nice. soybeans, some people that have... Soy allergy, right? Those soybeans go through the same plant to be packaged that the corn does, right? Mm -hmm. So that's another reason. And then nuts, right? Some nuts will be packaged at the same facility as non-nut things. So you have to take you have to take in consideration every last little tiny itty devil in the detail. But the at the plants where they're packaging this stuff, they have to be. Have a clean environment where they have to have but different areas for each thing. So they but don't how cross. do you know? How do you know that they're doing that exactly to Alex. the students? Because the FDA goes in and checks. Right, them. but, but the the FDA FDA really I want you all to keep, no. keep that in mind as well, because Alex is really spouting from the environmentalist viewpoint that they don't trust what the government regulations are doing or not doing. Oh well, don't get excited for that to occur, but he's really there. <laughs> yeah. Erica, you were going to say something. Okay, well, so you know how you're talking about how they take. Like nuts are in some of them. Well, then that the responsibility to make sure that people know that there's nuts in them is people who like package them and put the labels on them. And the it's, FDA. It's not necessarily the people that are making the GMOs' fault. It's people that are making the packages and the labels that go out and not putting it on there for the people to see that there's nuts in there. Because so then, if you know, if you know there's not, if there's no, there's not, if there's nuts in there, you wouldn't buy it. Then. But it can be the farm because in order, farmers have to harvest the crop to get it there. So yeah. if you don't, the farmers don't, therefore, well, yes, tell the company to... that this is this product, then it is your fault. Yeah, yeah. But farmers yeah. don't always know where it goes. But it's our okay. responsibility to let them know that what's in this crop. Okay, do you guys, okay, farmers, right, they, don't they use the same bins for corn and soy, right? No. They, they don't? No, no. Okay, but they use the same bins <laughs> for some crops, right? They don't? They don't. <laughs> Some crops, not all. You don't mix two crops. You don't mix no, corn not, and beans. No, no, not at the same time. But we're using the same right? You use pretty much okay. the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Once they get cleaned out, yeah. Yeah, but you can't clean extent. out every last time you want. Some people out there have such a bad allergy, if there's a peanut in the room, they will have an allergic reaction. So, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So it's sometimes the farmer's fault. It's sometimes the packaging company's fault. It's sometimes the FDA's fault for not checking properly. It's sometimes the, something it's is sometimes your fault because you guys so are worried too much. Yeah, no. Guys, you've you had allergies, haven't you? Yeah. Guys, hang on one second. I'm really impressed that you made it over 50 minutes before it started to degenerate. That's an awesome thing. Don't let it degenerate. One at a time. We kind Make of your point. Blame each other. Right? Take your but turns, but wait one second. But you won't right. stop talking. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even. Well, that's my next point. Come on. That's my next point, Paige. You need to make sure that you're getting your two cents in here because you're all getting graded, not just Alex and Daniel and Riley and Trevor. Oh, now, to thank you. He is doing what an environmentalist will do, right? Well, yeah, but not too much. They'll dominate, won't they? But yes, if you, as another interest group, allow the domination, is that his fault or yours? Ours. Ours. There you go. So someone start <laughs> so Just speak stop. up when you want to talk. Is okay. there a really good the moment, question from the citizens, maybe? Yeah. What? Questions. Zero. Give us questions that we can debate a little bit. I don't really have a question. I'm just waiting to jump oh, in at the I'm not sure about Trevor. You have allergies, okay. but you had, still have, okay. Con hey. under control. Let's say I have. Really how would you? Allergies. How would someone go in to prove that you, those allergies may or may not have came from GMOs? But the allergies don't come from the GMOs. The allergens are grown in the plant. So I'm. But, the GMOs. Alex, you have to let it finish. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, I'm I'm allergic to a lot of things in the farm. I'm not aller I'm allergic to hogs. 
the their dust and stuff. Really? So you are? You love them so you spend much? so much time with them? It's not bad. I <laughs> I just put up with a lot of my allergies, okay? <laughs> I don't <laughs> die when I'm around them. It comes out. Okay, so I'm allergic to them. I, it's not from being uh, that, from like, okay, it's not from eating the hogs, <coughs> from being around the hogs that I got the allergy. It's just a weak spot in my immune system that helps prevent it. Okay, but when I am around it, the hogs are producing the allergen, like the dust, and just being, there is the allergen there. So that's the same way in plants. Okay, so I don't know. Okay, say kosha, fireweed. The pollen in any plant, I'm allergic to that. Okay, I'm not allergic from being around pollen. When I was little, I did not get the allergy. It's just a weak spot in your immune system or your defense system. So then I'm, but the allergen is produced in the plant. I did not get the allergen uh, to be allergic from the plant. So then why did you tie allergies in with GMOs? Because they're creating new allergens. They're creating new allergens or with that my anybody's system that the concerned public or the public's immune systems that are preventing you from breaking out and keeping you healthy when around you. It's a new thing, allergen that you are not used to, so it could potentially cause bad reactions because your system doesn't know how to defend against it. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this a different direction. Because as as a concerned citizen when I think of things being genetically modified, that scares me a little bit. If we're willing to accept genetically modified organisms being done within a plant without any regulations, without notification, those kinds of things, what's to stop us from doing that to humans? And how far into the future will we genetically modify human beings without concern and or care? Done. It all depends on how you classify a GMO. I forget your questions halfway through you saying them. <laughs> you what's, so what's to stop <laughs> us from genetically modifying humans? Well, are you talking about the oh, lab base? Okay. Because technically, just having a child is genetically modifying because you're swapping genetic material to make something new. That's technically genetically modifying an organism. Are you talking lab based? That's selective breeding. How would you genetically you, modify an organism? Yeah, selective just, breeding is not con yeah. actually GM, uh, genetically <laughs> modifying. It's just... It's like, no, it is genetically modifying it, though. Daniel? You look at it genetically... Where did you get that? I read... I don't have the sources, but I read online that... Are you it's talking not, about artificial insemination? No. No. No, no not even close. Okay. So I read online that that's just breeding, crossbreeding, whatever. That is not technically genetically modified because... But was that a biased site? How do you know that they're not just... I've read it on multiple sites. Everyone's biased. Okay, but... If or bias. Multiple sites, then it could be just a vast majority bias, right? Do you have your sites saying that it is? Yeah, what? It all the <laughs> 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 Do you have no, your sites <laughs> saying that it is? If I go online, I can search it within. All right. Five so we months. have. Thank you. Does anybody online have any other questions? Because we're gonna cut these guys down. Um, a question was asked by Mr. Bruner, who has since dropped off. Um, is our responsibility? to feed and thereby promote an ever-growing human population? Or is our responsibility to the planet so they can sustain life over That's thousands of years? I feel like that depends on who yeah. you're asking. I want, I want somebody other than Alex to speak. I feel like that depends on who you're asking. Because if you're asking the immuno... Or not, sorry, I'm used to saying that because I had to keep... If you're asking the environmentalists, it's the latter. But if you're asking the farmers, I think most of the time it's going to be the former and not the latter. So farmers don't care about... Well, I said most of the time. Well, I would, Can you I would that? take that further because I am not aware. If we are genetically modified plants, can I grow them? Will they grow on their own? Is it sustainable on its own or do we forever into the future have to grow something that's genetically modified to grow? A plant naturally grows. But will it if it's been genetically modified? I found that they took out the, gen or the 
they made all the plants sterile for corn, so it doesn't grow back the next year. Hmm. Does anyone need to volunteer corn? But so if we are volunteering it to death, what is our responsibility? It's a great question. Is our responsibility to feed the people today, or is it our responsibility to protect the planet for life? It is vegetable murder. <laughs> we should all see me. Given that this is our only planet, we should probably go with the second one. Ah, but that there's I'm different planets. It should matter from the other oh, what is, I, your life. Should America no. close its borders? Remember your roles, people. Yeah. Isabel just told us we have to protect the planet, and she is environmentalist. an environmentalist. Well, I'm here to protect Absolutely. the people. And then there's yes. Alex, who's not also an environmentalist. Saying that what do we think the FDA has to say about this? They should, they should protect the people. Speak up. Right? Eric has something to say. Go ahead. Well, she doesn't. Well, I mean, yeah, we need to protect the planet, but if we want to continue with the human race on this planet, we need food to keep us going. We can't just stop like, making... But do we need more food? Yes. No. Do we need 200 bushels an acre well, of corn? Or can we live with 125? Well, we, can depend, live with we can limit our food portions. There yeah. are starving Cut children in Africa. Is this coming all over the place? Oh. I, would ask, I would ask the farmer in that group, though, so I'm specifically addressing Trevor on this one, even though the other two are farmers. I don't think they'll know the answer off the top of their head. How much corn does a typical farmer store in order to wait for higher prices? We don't really sell our corn. We give it to Kenny so that Kenny grinds it for us and brings it back. Right. Do you know what answer to that, though? Like estimation? But doesn't that make you a cattle farmer rather than a corn farmer? Yes. Who's a corn farmer? Daniel O'Reilly. How much? How much do we store? Are we making too much? Daniel answers the problem. You, everybody's storing just because the farmers, all they're concerned about is they want to make more mice so they can keep their farms up. So the average farmer probably, they store it their for, for a few months until after harvest because right. price is never good while harvest is going because it's an plenty. How much. Okay. Then they probably get rid of, they only get rid of little bits at a time and there's a lot of farmers that at the next year they will have maybe a quarter of their crop left sitting in the bin so it's or more which then what do they do with that uh like yeah. for us since we we store we hardly we probably store half our well i'm uh, probably not quite half our crop up in our bins for the next year well how much is half of your crop yeah is it, it, it doesn't acres? matter is it, it doesn't matter 90 acres but it doesn't that's not matter. i'm just saying we probably store half our crop but we're storing that where we keep enough rounds so we don't have to buy the high prices for our pigs. Well, the normal farm, they probably won't store that much because they need to have room for the next year's crop in the bins. It goes to what Erica, the farmer, though, was saying in the fact that if we are feeding the country as opposed to necessarily maintaining the planet, should we have stores of food waiting around to be sold? Well, yes, because say something goes wrong where there's this new invention and we can build anything out of corn and everyone would have sold their corn right away because they can make money off it and there's not some extra they use all their corn and then we don't have any corn left so they have to hold on to some of it because if they play their cards right the prices will go up because everyone's going to want to sell like this is what how I understand my grandpa how he does it They'll sell when the prices are up, because then once they get all the corn, prices can go back down. Then the prices, then they're going to need more corn after once that is all used. Prices will go back up, they'll sell. And, and what's driving that? Supply uh, and demand. Say that louder. Supply and demand. Yes. But it's all about the money. 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 Basis, money. So basically stock market and farmers. That's all I'm And a lot of them, <laughs> when the far, they, the farmers also store their crops, because you never know how the next year's crop is going to be. So for some farmers, they do, like we store it just because we don't, if the crop next year, like a few years ago, the price was so bad, or we were buying corn to feed our hogs, which you're probably using a truckload, 1,100 bushels, uh, with two barns, that's one week of feed. Do we have any other questions online? 
No, I don't think so. Does anybody, anybody? want one final statement? Um, um, can I just throw one thing out there? Yes. In theory. How about in hypothesis? In hypothesis. Sorry, Mr. Schneider. Um, in hypothesis, <laughs> if, like, if we could genetically modify, like, like peanuts or other various things that have, uh, like, uh, that give people allergic reactions, if we could modify those to take out the, what, like, the chemical that gives you the reaction, or that causes the reaction, then we could have where everyone could eat peanuts and have a fun time. See, that's a good, that's a good thing that has been modified thing to but do. How, but yeah. how they do it is going to Yes, more how they do it not. is like the kicker. Plus, if you take out some allergens, there will probably be some new allergen yeah. to replace that. It depends that. on what, ge what genetic material causes that allergy. Because what if you took so much away that it's really not a peanut anymore? And if you're it's taking an, something out, there's got to be something to replace really? it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's let's debrief here. What worked? What didn't work? Um, Just the, the, fat, the fat dude to sleep. The FDA. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did that work? <laughs> they took they took their new role and new title. So FDA, what what was the problem here? FDA, what was the problem? <laughs> Listen. Together. Oh, but you three are really opinionated, right? No. 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 It's also your opinion yeah. on you guns. Not to mention, I'm looking over your shoulder and I'm seeing a lot of information on your computer screen. So do we just chalk it up to not quite prepared for class today? Oh, we're prepared. Yeah, sure. We had no clue what we were talking about. Okay. What else worked? What didn't work? That is a great. The what? What do you want to say? Yeah, yeah. Did uh, that work yeah, or didn't it? It did work. The two minute time limit was good because it gave you a kick in the butt. It did. <laughs> <laughs> we, have to, we have to get you to start concising your opinion, your information down into a transferable, transferable it, thing, right? And not to mention what would happen if we didn't put a time limit on it. Now, I'll use Daniel here. Hey, I take offense yeah. to this, right? whatever it is. Right? Daniel would yeah. speak for 15 minutes, right? Yeah. And when you are in a typical, if you go to city council, they can put a time limit on the amount of time that you have that you can speak and get your idea out, your opinion out, your information out. So by doing that, it gives you all the same basis, right? Going in. In the work world, that's known as an elevator speech. And if you want to get your point across to busy people, you have to be able to do it quickly. That's just a good life skill to have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many people <laughs> did join this hike for the world? I only saw. I think seven. That's it. Um, you made us. Yeah. You made us. Why did they No, they they have jobs. <laughs> they stepped away from their job to join us, and they had to go back to their job. Well, I didn't know their employer came. No, 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 no. 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 Yeah, There's three of them that dropped, and all three of them had to get back to work. Gotcha. I hope that they were entertained. They they were. There's comments over here that, that we can talk about next time in class. Sweet. I'm excited. Did giving you a <laughs> did giving you a task help to focus your research? I feel like making you an environmentalist. Not really. I feel like does that make it easier or make it harder? I don't know. I feel like well, it's hard to defend the immunologists. Well, like. I felt like they had a very small role, well, the immunologists, because like they were, in my understanding of it, they were only for, they only were interested in if someone has an allergic reaction or if something happens where an allergic thing gets introduced into the plant. But what about genetically modified crops and or plants and or whatnot that could help solve something? Rather than looking at what the GMO may cause, that's why I threw it in there. Yeah, yeah. it can it can help relieve something else. You can touch your computer. Yeah. Im so. Immunologists might also be concerned with can we add specific things to our food supply that's going to prevent the flu. Yeah, I mean, oh, I okay. thought that was like hard. can we cure cancer by adding a gene to the corn? I felt it was hard to defend them because I'm all for GMOs. So yeah, uh, well, like we could have been for and not for GMOs. 
Well, and here's, here's some of the things that we need to work on. Just spouting random studies that might or might not exist somewhere in the world doesn't cut it anymore. And when you give factual information like statistics say, you need to give us the statistic. So when you tell us that a whole bunch of the corn that's made is genetically modified, you have to give us what a whole bunch means. Those numbers become incredibly important. I'm really curious, and I think Mrs. Kellogg's the one who brought it up, what kind of studies are there, maybe it was even Mrs. Patel, what kind of studies are there that are out there dealing with GMOs, the effects of GMOs? Well, the one that um, Taylor did was on, on how do the GMOs affect us um, disease-wise. And he found one site, I don't I closed it down, but um, that said okay. that caused cancer, and they were testing on rats. What's so the study? Where is it taking place? What are the parameters of the study? All of those things need to be put forth, right? Absolutely. So About the only group in here who can really randomly say stuff without a whole lot of people backing it up is the public citizens. Yeah. And y'all didn't anything. say nothing. Yeah. You guys come from a very different social standpoint, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. From the you literally said point. nothing. Technology. We said work. something. That's because we're concerned. I, I wasn't, we need to know what's I wasn't going talking on. about you when I said you literally said nothing. I was talking to them. So. so. Was Remember that your teachers release you from class, not an irritating bell. Did this activity help or hurt your understanding of GMOs? I don't know. It helped. We obviously learned more because we, we obviously had no idea what they were. It helped. I, I, I mean, this activity today. I feel it helped. Yeah, oh, everybody said something and they put in what they think about it. So, getting other people's thoughts and opinions. Helps you, yeah. And you also have other people's things? research as well. Yes, Mr. Schneider, the answer to that for me is yes. And did all of you find the same things when you did research? No. Did all of you find the same studies? No. 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 I was really thinking that the first when you first did your introductions of what GMOs were and that kind of stuff, I don't think I heard the exact same explanation of uh, what they were. I don't think so either. I know. I heard, so I heard random know. random parts of it that were, but Mrs. Keller, what are you thinking on your end? Um, I was actually, on that note of definitions, I thought it was good that you guys all gave a definition, but I found myself by the last group going, talking about another definition. It was like, okay, you know the definition now, but what? why does your group care? And so that's why I was bugging the concerned citizens about, well, so? So what does that mean for you guys? And just because I think that's the point of this debate. You guys were all assigned roles. You all have to kind of, you have to take a bias. You have to take a perspective and you have to argue it. And so that could have been emphasized a little more in your introductions. But I was impressed overall with how active most of you guys were. There was a lot of talking and it wasn't a whole lot of Mr. and Mrs. Schneider or me saying, and then what, and then what? You guys were leading that conversation and that debate yourselves. And that's awesome. Cool. <laughs> Anything from you guys that you absolutely have to say before we shut this down? Uh, I like hurdles. Who was uh, the, I think the one that was Bottom one right. lower, the one with the ball. The, the oh, that's the runner. I yeah, like him. Yeah. He helped us. I thought it was funny when Daniel's, Daniel's viewpoint oh. changed. At one point, Daniel, you started to argue against GMOs. It's hard to it argue against them, so I like them. Hey, so. Did you guys know that Mr. Bruner has his own farm here in Columbus? He has an urban farm. Oh, this so is the guy, that was the guy that you were telling us about. He knows more about GMOs than all of us put together, I promise you. He looks like a very smart man. Yeah. I like the beard thing. I'll tell him that you said that. Please put the room back. So, what do we turn in for the what? town hall debate on it, Bodo? Okay, great. Um, what about I that? I'm going to freak out about that. It's all in there. Okay. 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 And please don't kick my computer over into me. Mr. Snyder, if only you had that corn seed that you could regrow every year. I know. Then we could repopulate the world. But you farmers can't reuse their seeds. Why can't they? 
see what the C company's doing, Alan. Like a, um, yeah, the stupid seed companies say, oh, you can't so, use your own seed, you've got to buy it again. Where do they get the authority to say yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, that's, 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 that